All right, hi there folks. So I wanted to show in this video some examples of doing uh, what we call oblique sketching. Um, we're gonna be sketching some of the objects that we've already seen. Um, these are some of the ones, excuse the crinkle there. Um, the, 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 these, are, these are the examples I'm gonna give. This is one that you do have to draw for class and this is a past example done in cabinet oblique um, that I will do as an example. Uh, in the second part of this. Um, so some, just some things I wanna mention before I get started, just to review in case uh, anybody missed it or forgets. Um, obliques are where we go back at a 45 degree angle um, versus an isometric where we were using our 30, 60, 90 triangles. Um, if we were going to draw uh, in oblique, we would actually use our uh, 45 degree triangle. We're not gonna even be using a triangle today. We're just gonna be using graph paper because we're just sketching. But if we were going to be actually drawing, we would use a 45 degree angle. And it just so happens that it is a 45 degree angle if you go diagonally across a grid square. So that's we're gonna use that to our advantage. Um, so just some other things to note. Um, and this, this is something we may have gone over in class unless you're just watching this video without having uh, heard anything in class. Uh, that's why I'm going over some of this stuff here now. So um, we will be drawing cabinet obliques. They're called cabinet obliques because uh, obliques can look really unnatural. Um, that's what we kind of see here back with this house is this thing looks super weird. Like what's going on there compared to the isometric. But if we do it in the style of a cabinet oblique, instead of a cavalier or a um, full oblique is another way to call it. Um, it looks a lot better. Uh, we probably will stay away from the three quarter oblique. We'll just stick with um, half, half scale. And so the idea behind this is that if you are drawing full scale uh, with a cavalier oblique, it has that weird look to it. But when you do cabinet, uh, a cabinet drawing, uh, it is a uh, half scale for the depth. So the actual depth, the diagonal, the 45 degree, will cut all of those numbers in half. Um, so you'll see that play out here uh, as I do these examples. So enough of that, here are the examples. So let's start with this one. This one is uh, pretty straightforward. Um, we will, let me find a good pencil here, there we go. Um, just like with all the other ones uh, that we've done, we should block out the area first. So kind of look at the overall height, width, and depth of this and block it in and then carve away. I'm going to do this first like this, and then I'll actually show a quick example of what it would actually look like in um, cavalier oblique, so you can just see the difference between the two. But let's do it in cabinet oblique, so that's half depth, so one half scale, oops, S-C-A-L-E, four depth. Okay, so this is pretty simple. Like I said, we're gonna block in that general area. So let's keep this here where we can see it. So I'm gonna just start down here and we might notice that in our, um, in our oblique, the front view looks kind of like a front view. So let's just block this in. This is two, four, six, eight, ten squares wide, two, four, six, eight, two, four, six, eight, ten. And then how tall are we? Two, four, six, seven two, four, six, seven. And for our depth, we're gonna go, let's see. So since this is four squares and we're doing half scale, we're just gonna go across two diagonal squares. So I'll go two diagonal squares here. Let's fill in the front, two diagonal squares instead of four. Again, at the end of this first example, I'll show you what it looks like if we go the full depth you're gonna see how awful it looks because it looks super weird. So um, this is the beginning of our cabinet oblique. And so I'm gonna just start carving away now. Again, this one's pretty simple. So obviously we come in two from each side and we come up one square to create this shape down underneath here. Mm -mm -mm. Okay, we'll start with that. Let's carve out at least these notches up here. So those are three squares up, one, two, three and we come in two on each side. So I'm starting to see things fill in here. Um, circles, when you're doing a an, any kind of oblique, uh, on the front faces, they're gonna look like circles. On the other faces, they might look a little skewed. They might look more like an ellipse. And we can use the same technique that we've used all along for ellipses to draw a circle as well. So let's find the center point. It's um, 
from this corner here, it's one, two, three in and one up. So one, two, three in, one up. So this is gonna be the center point for both our smaller circle and our larger arc there. So just like before, I could sketch in, now you might be comfortable eyeballing a circle, but if you sketch that square in, throw some light diagonals and go about two thirds out, you're bound to get a pretty dang good looking circle just by connecting those dots. And so that's a start right there. And then you can, of course, erase your scaffolding that goes around that. Uh, let's do this larger ellipse here too. Uh, well, it's not an ellipse, it's a circle here. So this is one, two, three is the radius from the center. So one, two, three. Let's go out one, two, three, one, two, three. And again, we could have a box, have some diagonals and go one, two thirds up, one, two thirds out rather from the circle, not up and kind of bring that down and around. These are straight parts right here for the back part of the circle. What I like to do is since we know this goes all the way to the back, we can just go diagonally back from our quadrant point points, which are the, the sort of, um, the spots where the center line would cross, the center mark would cross. And that can help us to find that back circle there. One, two, diagonally. Uh, wait, where did we go? One, two, that's our center. One, two, mm -hmm. uh, oh, one, two, there we go. So it'd be down there. So this is our sort of back box. That's our center point. And we can work this out however we see fit, but that uh, that circle is going to be back there. And then we can just kind of connect these with like a tangent line. Um, and we can also construct the back part of this by just going diagonally. Again, this is our depth is going diagonally across the squares and we are cutting that scale in half. So we're just going back to, and that's why it helps that we block this in already because now we don't really have to do any more math. We can just go back until we hit the back of the object. And now we can darken in, so this will go back like that. Just darken in so that we have everything and then erase our construction lines. And we are done with that cabinet oblique. So a lot of people find these to actually be quite easier compared to isometric. And when you do it as a cabinet oblique versus the full scale, which I'll show here in a second, um, it really looks pretty natural. So you can do this with regular grid paper. You can get away with doing this maybe even without grid paper because you're just going back at a 45 degree angle. It's actually pretty easy. So um, like I said, let me show. So we just did the cabinet oblique. Let me show what it would look like if we did the full scale or the cavalier. I've actually already got this um, drawn up over here and I've got like the front part of it drawn up. So let me just go back. So this time, instead of going back two, we would actually go back four because that was the actual depth. And look at how long and elongated and bizarre this thing looks now. Going back four, it looks completely distorted. One, two, three, four. And it almost like loses, I would say at least, it almost loses the sort of feel that it had before of being uh, the actual shape that it was, and it becomes this almost entirely different object, this different looking object. So there's some pretty significant differences there if we put these two side by side when you do the full depth versus the uh, half depth. So this was half depth or cabinet, C-A-B-I-N-E-T, versus full depth, depth or cavalier. So we want to stick with the cabinet, the half depth. This is just, you know, if you were really stuck, you could do it this way. Um, so let's do one more. Uh, so at this point, if you understand what's going on, it's been a couple minutes. Uh, you've probably had enough. You can go get started, but I am going to do one more example here for another couple minutes, just for anybody who would like to stick around and see another example. Oops, it's upside down. <laughs> um, so this is yet another one we have done. This is not what I'm asking you to do for this exercise. This is completely different. It's just to show you another example of how that this could work. So um, for this one, I'm going to just do it off to the, the other side of the same object here or the same piece of paper. Um, for this one, same technique. I'm just going to block in 
all of the area that I think should be there. So the top part's easy. I pretty much already have it. This is two, four, six, eight, ten across. So let's put that on. Two, four, six, eight, ten across. How tall? Two, four, six, seven. Two, four, six, seven. Our depth again is four in the full depth, but we're only gonna go across diagonally at a 45 degree angle, two squares, so that we can do that cabinet oblique technique again. And I'm gonna fill in the rest lightly so that we can carve away. And now I'm gonna start carving. And this is where it can get confusing. If you have something that's one square, now you have to think, all right, I have to go back half of a square but I'm going diagonal. So I basically have to go to the midpoint of the diagonal from here to here. And that's going from this point to this point. So I went back half a square, but then when I'm moving up or down or left or right, it's gonna be still full squares. So that means I'm gonna go up about to the middle of the next square, cause it's up one square. And then I'm gonna go back three. So there's half of a square, another half of a square, another. So that was one, two, three. Our half scale is working. Let's darken that in. And that makes sense where we ended up. And we're gonna do the same thing up here to get this part that's jutting back in our right side view. So this one goes back two squares, so that's easy. Well, let's find the vertical position. One, two, three squares. So one, two, three, that is that point. And then I'm gonna go back two, which is really just a whole square because half scale, right? And then that's gonna come up to there. And that gives us our general side profile. And now I can bring these across and I can match things up to get the rest of this profile or the shape here. We'll come up there, get the back part across. And we are of course gonna to have to carve out this arc here too. So but let me finish this. And you know, let's clean up a little just so it's less confusing as we keep going. So I'm gonna clean up all the unwanted lines. I would recommend doing that as you go. Do, do, do. Okay, good. And last but not least, let's add in this, this arc shape here. So I'm gonna find the center. It's one, two, three, four, five in and it's right on the top, so one, two, three, four, five. So it's gonna be right there, one, two, three, four, five, good. And it's centered, so that's our center mark. It has a radius of one, two, three, so I'll go one, two, three to the left, one, two, three to the right, one, two, three down. And now, again, I see my part of a square with my diagonals, one, two thirds out, one, two thirds out, and I can easily fill in my semicircle, my half circle, and then I can just go diagonally backwards because I know that this is gonna go and hit the back of the object. I go diagonally backwards with my center point here too, and I can sort of project that back square, which is really just, you know, I've gone diagonally back from all these spots, one square, and now I can see here two thirds out from my center point, one, two thirds. You have to sort of like read between the lines, if you will, because you have to be able to visualize and see where that back part is going to be to, co to construct that arc shape. And you see my lines are not pretty here. This is just a sketch. So we get in there, erase, and just like that, we are done. So that's nice and cleaned up. Um, and circles can look a little weird when you're working in you know, this format. Uh, that's okay. Um, it's, it's just, you know, it's a quick and dirty way of representing something in a pictorial format um, that is a little easier so you don't have to go breaking out you know, the isometric paper here and all that stuff, which is less common than graph paper. So this is just a good strategy for drawing things. And it's one that we wanted to, you know, cover in this class. So I hope that this helps. Um, oh, I did actually, I had started sketching out uh, if we wanted to see a cabinet oblique of this. So I'll show that real quick. But if you don't care to see, or a cavalier oblique, if you don't care to see a cavalier oblique of this object done, um, then whoops. 
then you can dip out now because this is just the last thing I'll show. So I'll just do a full depth uh, pictorial of this so we can see what it looks like and see the ugly difference. Um, let's see, we came up one, two, three squares and we went back one, two, right? Yes. Up. Mm -hmm. Yep, yep, yep. Bring this across. Oh, I went up too high. One, two, three. That's where we should go. One, two, there we go. Oop, I have like a, there's like a light tracing thing underneath this. So sometimes I hit it and it makes a hole in the paper. So there's that. Let's bring this back to, because we're doing the full depth this time. Full depth, so that came back too. Let's go up to the top, back another two for the back part there. Bring this across, erase a bit. Uh, let's get our, that looks right, our circle in there. And I'm just eyeballing, I'm not even doing that. Just to show you guys, I'm not even doing the method there. So you can see the drastic difference now, even when I sketch this one also in the, the cavalier oblique or the full depth oblique instead of the half depth, there's a pretty significant difference in how this thing ends up looking if I put these two side by side. This one is so much deeper and much more distorted, it's kind of harder um, to see what it actually looks like. So, and there is actually some math to why we cut it in half, but I will talk about that if somebody asks.